everyone, it's Lisa, and today is Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. And I thought today I would kind of continue with my little um, filler and Botox series. I'm only going to do probably like three videos. But in my last um, video where I told you everything that I have, I told you I wanted to do a video on things that I have done that I did not like. Now that doesn't mean that you won't like them, but I just want to tell you just it's something for you to think about. And then um, I was thinking, I was thinking about where do I have Botox? And here's the thing, I don't get the same thing every time. I know that there's some people that maybe just get it across their brow and they might go and you know, every three, I think it lasts at three to six months and they might go and just get it back, you know, get it done, you know, every so often. I don't do that because I do different things at different times. I kind of just decide, you know, what has worn off, what I want, and so I get little tweaks here and there. So it's hard for me to tell you exactly what I do every time. But the main thing that I have done, and this is probably the most popular thing that they do, is across the brow. So I have... Um, Let's see, I think they do some here, here, I think it's like here, here. I know there's one that hurts like right there, and there may be one right there, but I have a strong brow, you can tell. There's a couple of things with the brow that have happened with me. Like I said, some of this might not happen with you, but anyway, <laughs> I'm just trying to be so careful. My brow has dropped before. And that really doesn't happen from doing right here, but when you start going up here in the forehead, and I'm sure you've noticed, you know, in the years that I've been on here that I've had a bunch of wrinkles right up there, especially when I do my um, tutorials. Oh, that was always killing me when I was doing my tutorials in the mirror, you know, and I would just see all those wrinkles. And so I have had some bad experiences with that. I think the first time I ever, ever, ever had Botox, I had gone to the dermatologist for something else. I can't even remember what it was because it was years ago before YouTube. I was probably, matter of fact, I think it was right before YouTube because if you will go back to my first video and those first videos, you you might not be able to tell, but I can definitely tell. I had gotten Botox like all over. I had gotten it across here and then all over in my forehead and my brows dropped. And that is the worst feeling. Even if it doesn't look that bad, the feeling of not being able to lift your brows and open your eyes wide. And back then, this was before I had my blepharoplasty and I've always had naturally hooded eyes. And you know, as you get older, kind of like the fat goes out of your lids and then you're just left with the skin. Well, you know, 10 years ago, mine weren't as bad. And, um, but you can still see how they're, you know, very, very hooded. And it just gives you this feeling of like claustrophobia. So I didn't have that done again for a long, long years and years. And then probably about five years later, I went to a lady and she actually, you know, has taught it and thought that she could put just a little bit in. I think she even used Dysport. She said, I think if I just put a little bit in, I can, you know, help with the wrinkles and it won't drop. Because every time, every time I go to get Botox, they would want to, you know, fix those wrinkles because they were so prominent. And so she did it and my one eye dropped, which almost was worse than both eyes and at first it looked so good i mean i was so happy and then like later on like after a week or so it looked real good but then maybe like 10 days or two weeks later i noticed i think it was this eye wouldn't open all the way and um i had to keep doing videos so i just had to do my makeup a little bit different so it would you know i guess it probably wasn't that visible to you guys but when you can feel it too it makes it even worse so that is something to be careful for and i think that's pretty well known that that can happen but 
something wonderful has happened. I went to a new doctor a while ago, and he is actually an anesthesiologist, and then he has crossed over and started doing some of this too. And he just was so, that bothered him so bad, and he was so confident that he could do it that I took the plunge. And I wasn't quite as worried because I've had the blepharoplasty, and I thought, okay, the worst, I always think about what's the worst that can happen. In any situation, I think about what's the worst that can happen. Okay, I thought, what's the worst that can happen is that it, it drops, and I'll just have to tell you guys, and I'll just have to get through it, but I figured since I don't have as much of a hooded eye anymore, it wouldn't be quite as bad, but it was worth it to take the plunge because he acted so confident, and I knew he, I don't know, I just had confidence in him. And so he did it, and I believe it was Disport that he did. I've had it done twice by him. And he does it, hey, Daniel. He does it right in here. Like, not over, he said, he knew, that's one thing that convinced me, is he was like, oh, well, you can't go over here, da da da, da. And I have loved it. I don't know if you've noticed, it's, I can see that it's wearing off a little bit because I'm getting just a little wrinkles. But, boy, it is just smooth as glass when it sets in. I just love it. So, I have been really, really happy about that. So, I guess my, um, you know, advice would be be careful and express that concern. Um, kind of feel out the person, you know, first and foremost is to trust who you're going to. And I don't even go to the same person every time, but I make sure that I go to places that I feel comfortable with and I really talk to the person and get a feel for it before I do it. So that is one of the first things I want to tell you is be careful with your brow. Okay, under eyes. And that you're going to think, what in the world, under eyes? Well, when I don't Okay, let me back up and do um, beside the eyes first because that kind of goes into the under eyes. Okay, beside, I was thinking I might need to pull you in a little bit. I do not get, you can see I have plenty of wrinkles right there. I don't get beside my eyes done most of the time. Now, sometimes I will get just, I've seen when they mark it, they usually do right here, like right here and right here. And sometimes I'll get it and just leave off this one because the way my cheeks and cheekbones are, if I freeze all of this when I smile, see it makes my cheeks kind of bunch up down here. So I just kind of get that sporadically. I haven't had Botox or Dysport or anything right there in a very, very long time. Probably, I don't know, I can't even remember the last time. But I'm thinking of maybe getting just a little bit of Dysport this next time because one of the advantages of doing that is it makes your under eyes so much less wrinkly and it makes your concealer look better it just makes everything go on better but under your eyes so it's like everything you do is like a trade-off and so some of these things I'm telling you about but you might want to still kind of experience and see which ones you prefer and you might be like me I'll go back and forth sometimes it's worth it to me to have the wrinkles and, you know, not risk having the bunchy cheeks. But then sometimes I think, well, I might get a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is get the Dysport. Because Dysport, the way it was explained to me, it is a smaller molecule. So when they inject it with the, you know, shot or whatever, needle, it kind of goes a little bit further in it. The way it was explained to me is it kind of drifts out, you know, gradually instead of like Botox, which is a thicker molecule, kind of stays isolated where they put it. And so it's stronger. And so I think what I'm going to do is get the Dysport and maybe that it would just soften it a little bit. And it also, you know, matters on how much they put in, who is doing it, all that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, there's so many variables, but I just kind of wanted to tell you my experience and then you can kind of go from there. So, I haven't had this done in a while, so I noticed that, um, see, when I smile, I get a bunch of wrinkles up in here. And so, one time I went in to 
Jacqueline, the girl that does most of my stuff that I have done. And I said, is there anything that you can do about all that wrinkling up in here? And she said, yeah, you can do a little bit of Botox right up in there. And I said, really? And of course she pulled out her book and she showed me pictures of people that had that pretty extreme and that she had done that and it looked really good. So I had it done. Well, what does it do? It, when I, after I had that done, when I squinted, it was fine right here, but that it caused everything to just kind of bunch up right over here. So I think that's one of those things that if you're not having this done a little bit, you probably shouldn't have that done because all it did was make, you know, everything squinch up underneath my eyes. And it didn't last very long. I didn't have much put under there, so it wasn't that big of a deal. It was lesson learned. So I, now I know I won't have that done again. And it does. it's not that it bothers me the way it looks. It was bothering me because it causes my concealer to kind of bunch up right there. You guys know how that goes. So those are the things around the eyes that I would say. Now going back to brows, a lot of people, you know, have asked me, did I, do I get Botox above my brows to give myself a brow lift? And I used to really, really depend on that. Before I had my eyelids done, oh gosh, I would just sweat it, you know. And I could go to the same person every time and every time would be different. Sometimes it would really, really lift my brows. And then the next time I would go, and it wouldn't really lift them. And so I tried to really start paying attention to what is different. And one thing I noticed is sometimes people would do the injections a little bit above the actual, you know, my eyebrows are like right on my muscles and they would go too far up and my eyebrows would almost pull together up underneath the, you know, brows up here. And so I mentioned that to one of the girls and she is actually also she's a physician's assistant no she's a nurse she was a um, emergency room nurse before she started doing this and she said oh yeah she said yours is strong right there and it's pulling up underneath that muscle and so we need to go lower on you so they go a little bit lower so there's just so many things that are just different with all of us you just kind of have to find out what works best for you and really pay attention to what you don't like because there might be something they can do to make it better so that i think is all i have to say about the brows i really don't have to worry about it as much anymore because i had my blepharoplasty so i'm not worried about my eyelids as much as I used to and um, so and as far as how many units I get I think it's pretty standard to get 25 units of Botox across your brow and I think I usually get either 20 or 25 and I think it's kind of standard to do 10 on the sides of your eyes I think I remember that I can kind of see you know they always fill out that little face chart and um, seems like I remember like two and two and then sometimes I think they even leave off that one whenever I do get it done so that's just that might be wrong but that's what I think I remember okay above the lip the lip flip okay there's two different I think from my understanding there's two different reasons to get above your lip you know a little bit of Botox the lip flip what they do is they put a little teeny bit of Botox, like I think right here, I've only had it done one time. They, I think they did it right here and like right here. And what it does is when you're talking, it keeps your lip from kind of going like that and kind of, you know, pointing. So it keeps it kind of flipped back. And it's really good for a lot of people because, you know, if your lips don't go back anyway, if they're kind of pointed more down and you have more skin coming down and the um, pigment part is underneath, if you do that, it's going to bring that pigment part up a little bit. And it's, I mean, a lot of people can do that instead of getting any lip filler at all. And so I did it once because I had to try it. And it was back when I was doing vlogs all the time. And I can, I can remember exactly where I was in traffic, what road I was on turning when I saw it in my video but it I already have such a prominent chin and lower lip and just jawline that it made my top almost recess back and I did not like the way it looked on me it just really changed 
I felt like it changed my profile and it changed the way I talked and I just didn't care for it on me. So I will not have that done again. But there is another reason that you can get Botox above your lip and you usually get it done just a little bit higher, like one right there and I think one right there and it hurts. It's probably one of the most painful Botox because it gets you right in your nose and it kind of goes up into your eyes and makes your eyes water. It is just one of those things. And what it does is it, um, you don't do it down towards your lips, but you do it up here and it keeps you from having all those wrinkles right here. And so when you're talking, you can see I haven't had it done in a while because you can see all my wrinkles right there. But I, that's not as big of a problem for me right now. I'm not worried about it. I'm sure it will be. So that's one of those things kind of like beside the eyes. If it, if I notice that it's bothering me, you know, I'll have it done. If it isn't, I don't worry about it. I try to, you know, not do, you're going to have to give up some. You can't just have your whole face frozen. I mean, I guess you could, but I don't want to, especially being here and talking with you guys, it's not going to look real good if I don't have any expression the whole time. And I have a very, very expressive face. You guys know that. Some of my frozen screenshots are hilarious. And um, so that's just one of those things. If you have really, really bad wrinkles, you know, ask them about that and see if it would help you. And if you want to try that lip flip, ask them if they think it would help you because it's something that a lot of people really like. Do you like it, Chanel? Huh? And, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get some drink. This next thing is something that I have done before. I think I've only done it one time. And then I never had it done again. And I don't know if I ever, I, I don't know. It was something that was bothering me for a long time. And it just hasn't bothered me. But just recently, I have noticed that it's happening again. And that is the chin. The orange peel chin. And if you have it, you'll know exactly what I mean. And... Like mine, and I think it's, it probably has something to do with your lower jaw and your lip and everything. But like when I put my lips together, you'll see sometimes my chin will pull up. And I don't know if it's maybe, it might have something to do with this, these two pulling down as you age. I'm not sure. I'm sure it does. You know, it all works together. But if you are having that, you know it is, oh, I just hate it. It almost makes you look like you're about to cry or something. And so they can do a little bit of Botox right there to keep that from happening. Now, you don't want too much. And I'm, this is kind of goes with above the lip too. You do not want too much right here because I have heard one lady that actually works at the med spa that I go to said that they did too much in her chin. And she said it actually took, she felt it, you know, kind of, um, you know, happening and taking effect like in a meeting. And she said she felt like she could barely talk because she couldn't, you know, she couldn't move her chin. So that is something don't, the thing of all of this is just to get little bits at a time. Just start very, very small. And then the above the lip, if you get too much up there, it can keep you from drinking out of a straw. I've had it done. The very first time I had it done, I think they did too much. And this was I don't know how many years ago, probably at least, I don't even know, five, six, seven, I don't know how many years ago, I had it done and I could drink and everything, but it did feel weird. And I can remember, I always, you know, put my head down to the sink and get water to swish out my teeth after I brush my teeth. And I remember I could barely, you know, get the water and spit it out. It was just so kind of, um, frozen. So, you know, along with all of this, you want to find that perfect amount for you. And that was, I think that was back before Disport and all of the other one. I think there's another one called Xeomin or something like that. It starts with a Z. And so, you know, there might be different things that you can do, but I just, you know, that's just something to think about. And, you know, pretty much anybody you go to, they're going to be aware of those things. But if you express your concern, they might go a little bit lighter than they would have. Okay, and the last one I had was across the brow. And I've already told you that, that, you know, just if you have a strong brow like I do, you know, you don't want it to pull up underneath. Like this was staying stationary and then my brows were like trying to pull up underneath. And I, that just reminded me, I can always tell, like mine's good now, but I can always tell when my Botox is wearing off because I have those kind of 
they're not real deep, but I have those lines right there that will just start showing. As soon as that starts wearing off, I'll get that. So what I do is I don't let mine completely wear off. I let it wear off about a third or half the way, and then all I need is a touch up. So usually every time I go to get Botox, I am not in dire need of it anywhere. I just need little touch ups. So it never, you know, in my last video, I had a lot of people asking me like the cost of filler. Well, of course it's different, it, you know, all over, you know, wherever you're going, all over the world, I guess. And it's different at every doctor's and it's my, you know, all the different places that I go to are my main one place, they have specials. And so, you know, I'll get some specials and then they have those brilliant distinction points. So usually I don't pay over, you know, two or three hundred dollars would be how much I would pay to get Botox. It's usually just a little bit here and there. And now, you know, I told you with the jawline, I started getting some right here. And so far it's, it's holding up pretty good. I think the first time she did it, it wore right off, but this next time she did a little bit more. And I think we have found the perfect amount and they always write down how much they use and exactly where they put it. So now I can go back and she'll know exactly where she put it and how much I need. So don't be afraid of it. You know, um, I just, I understand, I do. And it's like if my mom came to me and said, okay, Lisa, I'm ready to get Botox and filler, I would be like, whoa, you know, like, I would be hesitant. My mom is just a little bit more natural and I would never, you know, take her to a med spa and say, fill her up, you know, you know, give her Botox here, here, here. If she really, really, really wanted to do it, I would, you know, tell her to start off real small and, I would tell her probably to start, I think the most noticeable, pretty place to have it done is just across your brow. And you will not believe how much better your skin looks, your makeup looks. It's just, it. I think anybody who's had Botox knows it is just, you know, it's definitely a game changer. And so, you know, if you're thinking about it, don't be scared. It's not like you're going to go get it and your whole face is going to freeze. There are definitely little teeny ways to get it done, just like with filler. If your lips are bothering you and you just want just a little bit, go having just a little bit. You know, just eat, your lips aren't going to, you know, look like Lisa Renna if you don't already have Lisa Renna's lips. Go have your lips enhanced and just make sure you're going to a place that you trust and they're not, you know, hopefully they're not going to make you look crazy. And um, if anything, I have found that most people discourage you, you know, they're, they're, and I think that's from going to good places. They don't discourage you, but they don't, um, nobody's saying, get it, get it, get it. You know what I mean? They're just, they really do want you to think about it. So, you know, don't be scared just maybe to try it one time. And you could, like I always say, Anytime I go anywhere or I'm thinking about getting something done, I'll have like a facial, like a consultation facial or a consultation and just talk it over with them. And um, I think that would be a good place to start. So um, I think I'm going to wrap this up for my Botox mishaps. Nothing has really been, I think the worst thing that's ever happened was my brow dropping that first time. And it was before, right before I started YouTube. And... Um, you know, and then the second time when it happened with the one eye, she gave me the option of dropping the other eye. And I was like, no, I think I'll just deal with it. So, and you know, it wears off pretty quickly. It doesn't seem quickly when you have something to go wrong, but especially like if you get around your mouth done and you know, you're, you got too much in your chin or too much above your lips, really don't sweat it because that wears off so fast. It wears off in, I would say, two two to three months max because the, any muscles you're using more are going to wear off faster. Okay, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. As um, far as my rings go, I just have on the two that my parents gave me. That is a cornflower sapphire and then a, another ring that I believe was handmade and no earrings yet. I also did another attempt of the JLo look from Tati's video, and I ordered a bunch of stuff that they used, and so I don't know if it'll be here by Friday or not because I just ordered it yesterday and last night, but um, I will put everything I used in this look down below, 
And my nail polish is oh, my all-time fave summer nail polish, Rose Among Thorns by China Glaze. It is the ultimate neon nail polish. And it would be matte, but I always put Sesh Vite over it. But this is just the prettiest nail polish ever. You have to have it. So I hope you have a good day, and I will see you on Friday. Bye-bye.